Yo, it's Juice World. You rocking with Lyrical Lemonade. Shout out Cole Bennett taking over. <laughs> I was one of them dudes where I didn't really feel comfortable like venting some people about shit and like expressing what was going on. So I knew I wasn't the only nigga to feel that way. So I made music for other people to like like a therapy session, bro. Pretty much. And uh, I mean, I was going through hella like relationship shit, and I was to a point where. I'm like, I'm finna make a biased ass statement. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause obviously all girls aren't the same. Like, but I get that a lot. People in my DMs, all girls aren't the same. I'm different and you know what I'm saying? But like, man, fuck all that shit. All girls are the same, bro. <laughs> but nah, all bullshit aside, it was just really expressing my feelings at that moment. Like I made that song in the moment and I kept it and dropped it because it was how I was feeling. Like it was like pure emotion. Like, you know, how some people get pushed to a, a certain point where they live, like, they make a biased statement and they stick with that shit. So that's pretty much what I did with that song, so. I think the one major thing is um, studio, being able to use a studio whenever I want to. Like, I used to have to scramble for money to get, like, two hours at a studio, and I go from that to, like, getting 12-hour blocks, like, every night. And it's just, like, it's a blessing, bro. It's fucking crazy. And everything else, I try not to dwell on it as much because I don't want to just be like, I don't want to let myself get overwhelmed and just kind of have like, you know, just kind of break down about the shit. So I just keep it moving. I try not to dwell on much, but like my life is like 100% faster and just flashy. You know what I'm saying? Like everything's in my face all the time. And I don't know, it's going to take some adjusting, but I'm with it. Like this is what I want to do. So in a way, because you know, I went, literally from a fan standpoint to like being who I was like, you know, like a person I was a fan of. So in a way, but certain things are different, but most of it is what I thought it was gonna be though. Cardo is the GOAT. <laughs> Me and Cardo got a lot of shit. Um, uh, who else? Benny Blanco is cool as fuck. Me and him got a couple songs coming out. Uh, shit, Ski. Me and Ski got some shit. Uh, chain smokers, X juice on the way. So that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna, I'm gonna fuck with that happy though. Um, it's a lot, bro. Uh, I got some shit on the Pierre shit, some Pierre shit. That's hard. Uh, I'm trying to reach out to more people. Me and FKI finna lock in when I get back to LA. So he's one of like my dream producers to lock in with. Like. I remember I first heard his name, his tag on like a post song, and that shit like that was when Post Malone was like had 10k followers on Instagram. Like I was on him early, so like I was like, bro, this producer hard. And then he was on Love Is Rage like three or four songs, so I'm like, bro, he's like he's hard. So I'ma lock it with him. Um, I don't know, bro. It's a lot. It's a lot to. It's a lot coming at once. A lot to look forward to. So, I mean, I'm gonna keep it completely a hundred with you. Like, I be having my homies and my friends in there, like, every now and then and shit, but I'd rather it be as few people in there as possible just because of the environment is more peaceful, less distractions. There's certain people that I, I would like to be in there at all times, but it's only, like, two or three people I fuck with, like, you know, to be in there. And that's, like, no offense to the homies or none of my friends that be there, but it's just, like, that's not y'all atmosphere, you know? You can't go to a studio and act like, you at a bar or at a party or some shit. It's, my, it's work to be done, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about that. Um, I don't like necessarily going in there like completely solo though. Like sometimes it's just, you know, you can feed off energy of others, you know, and the vibes in the room. So it's two or three people I like to have in there at all times, but besides that, not too many. I would tell myself to stay as far away from drugs as possible. Um, Make sure to stay grounded with your family uh, and just don't give up. Because a year ago, I was finna quit this shit. Like, I wasn't finna quit this shit, but I was finna stop taking this seriously. Like, it was gonna be like a hobby instead of a passion, you know? Because, I mean, I feel like after a certain point in an artist, whether they want to admit it or not, if they're not seeing results, they're gonna start doubting themselves. And I took that shit to the max, so it was... It was kind of all bad, but I'm glad I kept going because look now, like, shit's paying off. So I think the main advice I give myself is just to not give up and keep, keep striving.
and stay sober. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, um, they have, but at the same time, um, you gotta learn, like, it's like a fine line between having an influence and like letting the drugs like do you instead of you doing the drugs. Like, cause it's so easy to get over consumed and shit. And I don't care what nobody says, it's, it's easy to get over consumed in weed. I know people that were like hard working ass motherfuckers and started smoking now they sit on their couch and every $10 or $5 they get is going to the next, you know, like gram or 0.5, whatever the fuck. So it's so easy to get over consumed in this shit. But um, I mean, I kind of lucked out because I didn't know the fine line between like, you know, just taking some to come up with some ideas and getting the vibe versus that being the lifestyle. And I just so happen to kind of edge my way out of that little mindset, but a lot of people don't. So I don't know. It's a, it's a balance to the shit, pretty much. I mean, she's like, I don't know, one of the proudest people ever. Like, she's like been my biggest supporter and cheerleader since birth. So I love her to death for that. And I mean, I'm trying to give her the world. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this shit. But um, yeah, she's always been a strong contributor to just my success and just making sure I had a nice school to go to and food on my plate. We're we not always on the same page. I'm more of a free spirit. She's kind of conservative, but she's starting to see like, she's starting to just let me be me, you know? And, um, but yeah, she's always been there. Always been helping me and she's so happy for me now. She, Calls me all the time, oh, I'll play your songs for my friends at work and stuff like that. It's cute. <laughs> but yeah, she's most definitely like, she's like, I don't know. She's like the biggest supporter. For sure, for sure. I mean, I went through a lot of phases. Um, I think I started exploring more music when I was in fourth grade, maybe fifth grade. I went through anything from the Beatles to like Skrillex. <laughs> Like literally every genre. I don't think I was too much in the country like that, but everything else I pretty much was into it. Like heavy metal stuff to like the Devil Wears Prada all the way back to like Fall Out Boy, or, you know, just different things. And um, I think I was, cause when I first started recording and making music, I was rapping and I was just kind of trying to stick to just hip hop and rap or whatever, you know, whatever was hot. And then I just decided like that's not gonna get me anywhere. So I just took a step back and walked into the shit as being myself. And that's just like a part of me. Like it's like subconscious, you know? So it's a blessing that I was, you know, as a kid, I was looking through all the genres and listening to all the shit I was listening to. It's cool. And I like putting people on this shit. Like some of my friends that I never would have thought would fuck with like Green Day and shit. I'll be putting their ass on, they be T, sending me snaps and shit and I'm listening to this shit. It'd be so funny. The main reason was to have more of a power push behind me, you know? Um, honestly, I feel like I could have, either way it went, it would have been good. But um, I feel like this was like the smartest choice and just some of the stuff that was presented to me during like the label meetings and stuff. It was certain things that I couldn't really refuse or not because it was like 100% real and I, you know, I felt that it would help me the best way. So that's why I took the label route, but yeah. At the end of the day, I like to make people happy. You know, like I like to, I like to spread joy. I like to make people happy. I like to like create connections with music and you know, vibes and bring people together. And I think that's the main thing. That's why like, you see me like when I be playing shit, I just be looking. Cause I be like, I like seeing joy. Cause it brings me joy, you know? I'm not necessarily the most joyful person in the world, but that's one thing that does make me happy, making music, especially that other people can relate to, and that makes them see, that makes them happy. It's like good energy. It's almost like the uh, like the law of the universe type shit, you know? You reciprocate the shit, so yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's the, the history behind that shit. The lowest point I was at, um, like emotionally, mentally, all that, was when um, I was having like relationship troubles at the same time. It felt like my music wasn't going to where I wanted it to go. And my grades were fucked up in high school and it was time like to, you know, for colleges to start looking at motherfuckers. 
and I wasn't on any like sports teams or none of that. So I'm like, bro, what the fuck am I going to do after high school? Like, you know, and I was just, I'd be sitting in my room just going crazy over this shit. And it's weird because it's not like I didn't understand this shit. Like I used to, like my ACT score was high as shit. I got like a 24 or some shit. So like I was smart as hell. I just, being in school just wasn't for me. And my music in my head wasn't where I thought it should be. So it was just like, what the fuck do I do? And I didn't want to work no regular job or none of that shit. So I was literally just walking around and living my life in confusion, trying to figure out what was the next move. And something just told me to keep pushing music, just keep making music, keep making music. And that's kind of what led to me getting out of that hole and getting where I'm at right now. So my first piece of like, I guess piece of music I'm dropping um, it's gonna be like a, like a love tragedy, I guess. Uh, I'm about to do like a whole little press run for the shit and just get everything put together. But um, it's gonna be, I think it's probably one of the best things I've put together. Um, I, I got a lot of music coming after that. Tapes already pre-planned. Like I've been recording a lot nonstop. I don't like to party. I don't like to really go to clubs and shit. Like I like to perform. That's like my party. But besides that, I'm in the studio or sleep. So, and most of the time I be in the studio because I don't sleep like that. So I have a lot of songs like pre-planned. A lot of like mixtapes and EPs just pre-planned out. And now I'm just you know strategically waiting for the right moment and stuff. To be honest, um, in the south suburbs where I was living, it was a studio, um, Envion Entertainment, I think. It's, it's Envion Entertainment, yeah, and, and like Country Club Hills. The main, the owner of there, and like he's like my, he was my engineer too. He pushed me through so much shit and helped me with so much and just really just kind of helped me set the pace for my shit. And even from the start, he was. Um, he was fucking with me heavy. He said he saw potential and all that. Like, I fuck with him forever for that shit. Like, no bullshit. So if I had to name somebody that played that role, it was most definitely him. It's funny, cause no matter, like, my first performance, I was not nervous. I wasn't like completely confident, but I wasn't nervous. It's almost as if I like blacked out and then I came back when the performance was over with. Like it was just like adrenaline pumping and I just, you know, I tried not to tense up, and I just was, I just ran it. <laughs> like it was weird. It felt natural as fuck, though. So I don't know. A lot of people say that um, some people have to practice like stage presence and like studio presence and stuff. But like all that stuff has come natural, like to me. It's like a blessing. But like I don't know. I was, it was fun as fuck though, most definitely. From under a cork tree by Fallout Boy. That was the first album I ever bought. I remember the first five, low key. From Under a Cork Tree, then Dookie by Green Day. Um, and then I switched completely over and was like, Thank Me Later by Drake. And then uh, I think it was some Foo Fighters shit. And I know the last one was Escape the Fate, uh, Dying is Your Latest Fashion. That's my shit. I still bump, I'm finna bump that after I leave. <laughs> no bullshit. Bro. I want to work with Billy Idol <laughs> so bad and Ozzy. So I wish I had a time machine, bro. I would open for Black Sabbath, bro. Like, oh my mama, I swear to God. And just, I don't know. There's so many of them, bro. Uh, Billy Idol, yeah, Billy Idol, Ozzy. I want to do all the little punk bands I listen to, like Senses Fail, all them shits, bro. Like, fuck. Fall Out Boy, I'm going to make that happen. I have to make that happen, so that will happen soon. It's shit, I have to make it happen. Um, I wish I could go back and work with like the Beatles and shit. Just so you know, so many different like shits, bro. Um, there's this indie band. I don't know how big they are. I know they they have a presence on SoundCloud. I don't know if you heard of them. Daywave, have you heard of them? They're so fucking hard. That music sounds like California in a song. Like just a sunny ass, palm tree ass state. Like they're hard as shit. Um, Escape the Fate. Like Ronnie, like the lead singer, he hard as shit. Um, bro, there's so many. U2, the lead singer, he cool. 
I ain't never really, I liked a couple of their songs, but his voice is like very, it's beautiful. So I will fuck with him. Um, Young Thug, <laughs> that has to happen. <laughs> Future, that has to happen. That's another big influence, bro. Future is so fucking hard. I listened to Future for the first time when I was in sixth grade. And um, I remember asking my friends, like, you heard of uh, this artist named Future? And they were like, nigga, you mean Odd Future? And I'm like, maybe I'm saying the name wrong. I go back to the crib, I'm like, ah, Future. Some whole different shit from Future, and I end up liking that shit anyway. So I end up fucking with that shit in like sixth grade. Like, I was on hella shit early, bro. No bullshit. But yeah, there's so many people. I want to work with Tyler, the creator, too. Hell yeah, for sure. <laughs> Success is me waking up every day, and for me to do, like, me being able to do whatever the fuck I want comfortably without having to worry about anything. If I want to wake up and donate $10 billion to a charity, I can without having to feel like, damn, this shit just hurt my pockets, you know what I'm saying? Or if I want to take, if I want to live in fucking France for like six months. And you know, just being able to literally do whatever the fuck I want comfortably and not have a worry, make sure my family and all my close ones are taken care of. That's, that's success in my eyes. In 10 years, I want to wake up in London, right? And then go back to like LA the same day and then pull off in like a McLaren <laughs> and then go home and ride dirt bikes and then wake up and then go back to London and then repeat. <laughs> no bullshit. And then throw some studio time in there, I'll be straight. That's like the perfect life. But wherever I'm at, there has to be a Chick-fil-A. That's like, bro, what? Chick-fil-A is the best shit ever invented, bro. It's so fire. It's so fire. No bullshit. That's perfect life, though. Chick-fil-A, dirt bikes, London, studio, LA. Perfect life.